This is the Buffer Basics uh, screencast from the Emacs Tapas series. And this is the basics of working with buffers. Now, buffers are the main way the Emacs works with text. Um, they're one of the key features of Emacs because obviously text is one of the main things that it's about. You probably already know something about why buffers work if you use it, if you use Emacs at all as a programmer um, or as a writer. But this is about how are you going to use buffers from inside Elisp. So first, let's uh, make a buffer, and we're going to call it Nick Test. So this is a buffer. We're familiar with those. Um, let's switch back to our scratch. We can get buffer and it's name nick test and if we evaluate that we can see down here we've got a thing called a buffer and it's called nick test we can see that so this is a special buffer type that emacs has um, distinct from any other lisp so uh, now if we go back to that buffer and we kill it with control xk that's normal and re-execute this that'll be nil now because there is no such buffer called nick test we can do this instead and now we've got a buffer nick test it automatically created it because it didn't exist so let's go and look in nick test okay there it is if we do it again it's the same buffer now if we do this one it's the same buffer okay so now let's wrap a set queue around that. So now we've got Nick test buff. And that's Nick test. One other thing that we can do is to test whether that's a buffer. That's true. Nick test buff, the variable nick test buff is pointing to a buffer. Now let's kill that buffer automatically with this, and that's how we do this. And let's go back. So first let's prove that there's there's no buffer called nick test there anymore. So now let's try and that again. It's still a buffer. Nick test buff is still a buffer type. So there's still a recognition that that buffer existed and it was it was a buffer. Instead of just buffer p though, we can say, and if I could type, that would be good. Buffer live p is false for Nick test buff. That buffer doesn't exist anymore. Let's show another way of making some buffers. There's generated a buffer called nictest. Let's make another one. This one's called nictest2. This one's called nictest3. nictest4. Let's go and look at the buffer list. You're probably familiar with this. Control X, Control B lists all the buffers. And we can see here we've got nictest, we've got nictest2. Go to test three, go to test four. Another way of listing the buffers is with iBuffer, which is slightly more friendly, I always think, for programmers. There's a lot more that you can do with it. We'll show probably another screencast on iBuffer just on its own. I'm going to go and delete these other buffers because we don't need those. That's great. So now we have a buffer called Nick test I'm going to capture that like here because the buffer already existed get buffer create didn't need to create it we can run that as many times as we like it'll still be the same buffer now we're going to show inserting some text into the buffer. So we could do that simply by switching to the buffer. Nick test. 
and entering some text. But we want to do this programmatically. So we'll use the variable name and this form with current buffer to automatically switch the buffer context in which we're in. So when I evaluate this, you might expect, if you didn't know what with current buffer did, you might expect some text to appear in this buffer. But it doesn't. Let's go look at Nick test. And of course we've got two buffers called Nick test here. There we are. Let's just prove that. What is Nick test buff? Nick test buff is buffer Nick test. So I must have created one with one of these after all. Um, so let's go and insert some more text there. Oh dear. We want a carriage return on the end of that line. But now we want to do it again. Oh dear. Let's split the screen and put that buffer there. And we can keep doing this. Actually, I wanted some different text and I wanted it at the start. I don't want it there. So let's go and delete some of this text. Now, how do I move the text so that it goes in at the beginning of the buffer instead of at the end? We have to move point when we change to the buffer. So now, when Emacs enters the buffer and enters the text, we can see that it goes in there. If we do that again, let's change the text again. Uh, more text to insert. And if I move the pointer again, we can see It always puts it in right at the end. What if we wanted to go right to the end? We use point max. Finally, what if we didn't have split windows and we wanted to display that buffer in this window, this is how we do it. That's basically the very, very simple basics of how to use buffers. Um, there are more advanced things to talk about, about how to place text, how to find text and other buffers, and they'll be covered in other screencasts. Thanks a lot.